I think it's official at this point, and I can no longer blame it on the fact that I've been a professional audio engineer for so many years. I have way too many microphones. What is up, people? Dunna here, and today we're gonna be doing a quick overview of the new MKE 400 from Sennheiser. In my opinion, they've done a really fantastic job of packing great sound and lots of options into a really tiny form factor. But let's break that down a little bit. Now, right off the hop, let's talk about the price. This is going for 199 US, which makes it definitely not a super cheap or budget microphone, but it doesn't sound like a super cheap or budget microphone either. A lot of people start off with the sub $100 options like this Rode Video Micro, which is fantastic and super compact and really inexpensive, but it doesn't necessarily sound that great. And once you get this giant wind muff on top of it, it's really not that small either. Another option in that category is the Deity D4 Duo, which is really cool because it's got front and back capsules. It's got lots of really cool options as well, but same kind of deal. Once you get the wind muffs on it, it's really not much smaller than the MKE 400. And again, it doesn't sound like one of Deity's high quality mics either. The MKE 400, I would more compare to the Deity D3 or D3 Pro. And if you're more familiar with Rode, probably something like the Video Mic Mic Pro or the VideoMic NTG. Similarly to those other on-camera microphones, this is also a highly directional super cardioid pattern. So that means it picks up really well in front of the microphone, not so well from behind or in the side. So it's gonna pick up your voice when you're talking to the camera or whatever your subject is in front of the camera and not so much everything else. And like I said before, I think what they've done really well with this one specifically is they've given you that higher quality sound that you would expect from those more expensive microphones, but they've done it in such a small package. Now it might not seem like it at first, but let me break that down. This is the Rode VideoMic NTG on the shock mount that it comes with. Now you need this shock mount to mount it to your camera. So it's kind of part of the package, right? Now, first of all, lengthwise, you can see that the VideoMic NTG is much longer than the Sennheiser. And second of all, width-wise, you can see that once you get that shock mount on there, it's definitely a lot wider too. It takes up a lot more space that way. Now, it might look like the NTG is skinnier out at the front of it, but you're gonna probably want to put on some kind of wind protection like this. And these guys are total garbage anyway, these little foamies that come with them. They never really do much in any kind of serious wind. So then you go out and you get one of these guys, like what I've got from Movo, and all of a sudden the MKE 400 is looking pretty darn tiny comparatively to this giant Rode VideoMic NTG. And I've even got smaller wind protection here, so. You can see the size difference there. It's pretty huge comparatively to this little guy. Now, you might be thinking, well, this one now has wind protection. So what happens with this one? Well, this whole capsule here is actually built in wind protection. And like you saw on the video mic NTG, we've got a shock mount system so that when you're handling your camera, it won't be making a bunch of low frequency noise. The shock mount is actually built inside of this whole capsule as well. So the microphone itself is actually really, really skinny but it's just mounted inside there on a shock mount system inside wind protection. Now, that wind protection probably isn't going to be anything crazy, so they've also sent it out with this extra wind muff that you can put on top of it like that. And in my experience, it works really well. The kind of combination of that internal layer plus the kind of more soft, furry outer layer works really well. Now, if we compare that again, the MKE 400 hasn't really gotten much bigger and the video mic NTG is still a pretty hefty thing. Now it sounds great, but it's pretty big. Another thing to keep in mind in a similar vein is because of the way that these shock mounts are set up on both the Rode and on the Deity microphones, they become really tall. They go really far away from the camera when you mount them in the hot shoe, whereas the MKE 400 stays really low profile. So the question is, did they have to cut any corners to get this microphone this small? So let's go through some of the features and you can be the judge for yourself. So first and foremost, the batteries that you'll find in here are two AAA batteries, so not a recharge rechargeable system. That's got its pros and cons, of course, if you have something with a rechargeable battery, which is what a lot of the new microphones have, like the D3 Pro and the VideoMic NTG. It's pretty cool because you can just recharge it whenever you want, but if you make the mistake of letting it run down and you're in the middle of a production, the only thing that you can do is halt production to go plug in that microphone and give it a chance to charge up. With this, if you carry a couple of spare AAAs on you, you can always just switch them out. But what's really impressive about this is it's actually got a 
300 hour battery life. So it lasts a really, really long time. <laughs> and on top of that, it actually auto powers on and off with your camera. So you can't accidentally leave it on and just run out of batteries while it's sitting in your bag or something like that. As you turn on the camera, the microphone will sense that and turn on as well. And as you turn off the camera, it'll also turn off as well. Now, if you want to use this microphone with something that's not a camera or something that doesn't have whatever that electrical signal is that goes down the cable, you can also power it on just by using the power button and you can just hold it down if you wanna turn it off. Also, if it gets down to less than three hours of battery time, that green glowing button will turn to red. So you have like a three hour warning to get a new battery in there. Also on this side, we're gonna see a low cut filter. So this'll help with any kind of low frequency rumbling noises or a little bit of wind noise or anything like that. It's something that's pretty common on microphones but gets left out of a lot of those smaller vlogger microphones. And then beside that, we've got a three way gain switch. So as far as I'm aware, the plus symbol is plus 20 decibels. Right in the middle is at zero at nominal level. And then the minus is actually minus 20 decibels. So you've got quite the range there. You don't have the same kind of stepless gain knob like we're seeing on the D3 Pro and the VideoMic NTG, but this is a more kind of classic, something more like the VideoMic Pro. And it definitely gives you a little bit of versatility and then you can dial in the rest of the gain on your camera. Generally, you wanna have as much gain from the microphone as possible and as little from the preamps in your camera as possible. That'll give you the cleanest signal. And then if we flip it around to the other side here, we'll see something really interesting as well. We've We've got a headphone output as well as a volume for that headphone. This is something that we're not seeing on a lot of microphones and can be really handy because some of those kind of vlogger cameras don't necessarily always have a headphone output. Something like the Sony a6400 doesn't have that. If you are going to use that headphone output, you have to remember that that is before it gets to your camera. So if your camera gain is turned way up too much, it might still be distorting through the camera. You gotta keep an eye on your audio levels. And then one of my favorite things about this microphone is that they've put the output on the front right there, and it's actually got a screwing mechanism so that you can lock it in. We see this sometimes on like wireless lav solutions, but once you get that screwed on there, you definitely can't get it out. And the placement of this is really important because it's under where the actual microphone is, it's not taking up any extra space. If let's say they put it where the headphone jack is, it would stick out the side and it makes the profile of the microphone actually wider. If it was on the back, it would stick out the back and make the microphone longer. As it is, it's just using the empty space that would have been under the microphone in between the microphone and like the lens of the camera anyway. So it's really using no extra space whatsoever. I thought that was pretty clever. Like I said before, it does come with this wind protection in the package, which I pretty much just leave on it all the time because it doesn't take up almost any extra room. They've done a really nice job fitting that. It also comes with this handy dandy little carrying pouch and it comes with a second cable designed specifically for your phone. So it's got a TRRS end on it. If you are using most modern and Android or iPhones, you're going to need an adapter to go from this to either USB-C or your lightning connector. And speaking of using this microphone with mobile, they've also got the option for a mobile video kit, which comes with a uh, Manfrotto Pixie tripod, as well as this phone holder, which is actually probably one of the better phone holders that I think I've ever seen. It's quite sturdy. It's got all these quarter inch threads so you can do all sorts of accessories and stuff. It's got a hot shoe on the very top of it, which is really nice so you can slap your microphone in there. I've been using this microphone for a little while and I have run into a couple of little things. Namely, that the cold shoe accessory, when you go to tighten this down, because it's so low profile and because it's so short, it's actually kind of hard to get in there and tighten it as much as you want to. And so then it does have a tendency to kind of come loose on top of your camera if you don't make sure you get it really tight the first time. And then of course, the final question is, how does it sound? Is it my favorite sounding microphone? And the answer is, no, I think my favorite sounding microphone for kind of on-camera vlogging type of things right now is the Rode VideoMic NTG and then the MK400 and then the Deity VideoMic D3. But let's do a couple of quick tests in this situation and I'll show you what they sound like. All right, so this is the MKE400. I do use my microphones with the wind protection on them most of the time, so I'm just gonna leave it on for now. I've got it in the plus 20 decibel mode. And just for right now, I've got the low frequency cut turned off. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. 
Dance Floor Pro, you know, I know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit. I gotta get jiggy with it. Ooh, that's it. Okay, so now we've got the Deity V-Mic D3. This is the $99 version, so it doesn't have a lot of the bells and whistles that the D3 Pro has. But because of the size and because this one's actually cheaper than the MKE 400, I think this is a pretty good matchup. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. Dance Floor Pro, you know, I know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit. Gotta get jiggy with it. Ooh, that's it. And then finally, we've got the Rode VideoMic NTG, which has been my go-to for the last little while here for when I'm out and about running and gunning. I've got no low cut filter on it right now, and I've got it in its highest gain setting. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. Dance Floor Pro, you know, I know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit. Gotta get jiggy with it. Ooh, that's it. And just for comparison's sake, this is the Rode Video Micro. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. Dance Floor Pro, you know, I know, I go psycho when my new joint hit. Just can't sit. Gotta get jiggy with it. Ooh, that's it. On your mark, ready, set, let's go. 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 So that should give you kind of a basic idea where the MKE 400 stands in terms of kind of the competition. I've been really happy with my experience with it. I really love that form factor. I think that's the real winner for me. In my opinion, it doesn't sound like one of those tiny compact microphones like the Video Micro or the Deity D4. It sounds much better like the D3 or the Video Mic NT but they've managed to fit it in such a small package and having the shock mount built inside is so awesome. As always, links for everything will be down in the description if you want to check them out further. And I want to hear from you. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on the MKE 400. And on your way down there, hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future reviews and tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. It is hot in here.